Let's see. It says we're live. We're live? All right, boys. Yeah, we're, live. we're live. We are. So this is the uh, the first episode of 2022. Hey, happy new year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're coming in strong with a excellent topic for today. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be every week's topic, I think, from now on. Uh, this is it's, this is now the new this is the new normal because we've done every topic known to man. That's totally. That, you know what's uh, funny? As soon as you told me you were like we ran out of topics, I thought of like three more, and I was like, oh, I want to spurg out about these topics. What what were the topics? Uh, it'll be about topic. conditioning and getting in shape. Uh, no one cares about that. It's exactly. <laughs> <See>? <laughs> Just like they didn't care about how to train in a hotel. I think that video had about thirty-seven views. <laughs> no, it has like a hundred some. I actually sent that to a lot of my clients who were traveling at the time. I was like, perfect. I don't even need to talk to you. I can just send you this video. They're in a hotel. They're not going to watch a video for an hour. They're like too busy watching like the go. adult channel on. Jeff Regans. Uh, hey, old what's Jeff. What's up, Jeff Regans? Pal posting from Jeff. Um, but yeah, what's this channel, Chase? What's going on here? Well, I'm just hanging out. But uh, yeah, we had a good little uh, holiday break there. Uh, me and Phoebe celebrated some Christmas action. Uh, we so can I ask? Can yeah, I ask we, what the? Did you have to go to her like family's house for the holidays to okay. do that sort of thing? No. So is it from, because I just want to see the reaction of her family when they introduce you to all already, of her family? I met them and all that. I'm, I met them all. They're cool. So well. what happened? How did that go? Um. So they saw me. Were they in shock. <laughs> so she has she has two sisters and uh, both her sisters are married. Um. And he's kind of like hung out and um, I've met him again multiple times and like they kind of were just like you know a little hesitant at first I could tell. Like, <laughs> did they think you were a ghost is that what they white, they all start freaking white out boy doing over here yeah but, um, you're you know, the like, whitest white boy as well like you're not even just normal white you're uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I'm like apex white did you do like uh, cargo shorts, white socks, New Balances? Did you wear the shorts? No, I, I didn't. No, I didn't say howdy or anything like that. Either. <laughs> <laughs> you came with a cowboy hat on for everybody. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, Did you start like, freestyle I, rapping? That would have been awesome. No. I um, we were I I cooked them some steak because like one of them is really good at barbecuing. The other one just just eats food, right? Um, the one that was really good at barbecuing. You know, I told him like, you know, I cook some, some meats and I'm, I think I'm decently good at it. And he's like, all right, then uh, let's see it. So <laughs> I, I made him some steaks and everyone, everyone really liked him. They're like, okay, damn. Did you get the uh, seal of approval on your steaks? Yeah, they did. And then I, um, we all started playing some music and they're like, do you know who this is? And it's all like, you know, 70s. Um, 70s R&B. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like Marvin Gaye, uh, Barry White, Al Green, all that. And I was able to name them all because, of course, that's what. Ribito listens to him in the gym uh, <laughs> that saved me, you know. <laughs> uh, I was like, oh, yeah, I know this song. <clears throat> Thanks, Rip. You poured one out for him in the bar, too. That's I pretty did. sick. Um, fucking hell. God, okay. What would you get Phoebe for Christmas, man? Um, we actually don't really celebrate Christmas. Okay. I mean, like, I, Christmas? I asked her, That's an Oklahoma thing. No Christmas no, in Oklahoma. Me and her. Like, you know, it's... We're at the point where it's like, hey, do you want something? Yeah, okay, well then just order it and I'll buy it. Okay. <laughs> just get it. <laughs> yeah. Like um, an old married couple. Kind mm -hmm. of. And like my so my birthday was a few days ago, so like I kind of just lumped everything together. I was like, I, I don't really need anything. Again, I'm the type of person I'll just go buy it if I need it. Uh, but she's just over there pestering me about like, what do you want? What do you want? And I was like, well, I guess I could use this to my advantage. So I was like, I want like a cool knife or something like that. <laughs> Use this to my advantage. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah tactical exactly. relationship. Uh, and I think I'll, I'll probably get her like so her birthday is next month, and I'll probably give her some like I don't know, she wants some Gym Shark shit. Oh, Gym um, Shark stuff. Yeah, oh, cool. What's Gym Shark. It's a clothing brand here in America. Okay. Yeah, but it's only for like the really uh, bougie people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's like Lululemon, but like if you don't play lacrosse. You know, if you're like kind of like a, references. if you're like a very like, ritzy, like you know, Jesus Christ, in what country are you even from, man? But it's like, I think like the, the very ritzy version is, uh, what's it called? Is a uh, Lululemon. And then on the opposite version, we're like, cool gym guy, heavy metal. That's Jim Shark, I feel like. Yeah. And then animal, animal apparel as well. Animal. Mm-hmm. Mm, okay. What'd you get for Christmas, Mick? Well, I mean, the Jews aren't notoriously uh, <laughs> Christmas celebrators. Did you Christmas invest in the... anything for Christmas? Did you get some? No, hell no. Okay. no. Yeah, just bought some gold and uh, 
hid it in the <laughs> hid it in the forest. Uh. <laughs> the rest of my uh, rest of my precious metals. But I tell you, Christmas was the and being a Jew, like the Christmas was the worst day of the year as a child growing up in the eighties because um, you know there's, this is pre internet. So there's nothing on TV. You got four channels. Oh, it's all yeah. just Christmas rubbish. Okay. Um, didn't get any presents. Didn't have a lunch. Just had to sit around all day. It's stinking hot. <laughs> um, and the the best part of the day was watching all the other kids in the street playing with their new presents. Oh yeah, you didn't, even, you didn't even have snow. It's not like they're sledding. No, it's like right? four. It's, it's like you know, it's a, it's thirty five degrees Celsius. It's dry. There's flies. It's just you know. It was don't you have like eight eight nights of where y'all get presents or some shit? We didn't even do that. That's didn't just that. we just, oh, we just gave up on them. Jews. Oh man, <laughs> nah. are the lame just, ones. Just non-practicing. No, yeah, no non-practicing Jews. Practicing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the worst um, day of the year. What are we going to talk about today, guys? I have a list of yeah. possible topics that I have not. Nah, shared yet. just just keep talking. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Let's see what's next. Contact information. I feel like. Oh, yeah. needs to get out there. Chase, can you show us your Instagram, please? What's going on, on your Instagram? Uh, I don't have my phone by me, but um, here recently, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, no. So my Chase, uh, mine is Chase at or at Chase Lindley, all my name. Um, and then I need to reach out to this Chase 2.0, see if like how many followers followers he's gained in like. Uh, you know, if anybody's asked him like questions about lifting or anything like that, but uh, I haven't heard from this guy. He's probably like super jacked right now. I hope so. He just started so. blasting yeah. trend. As soon He's as got six thousand. Oh no, that's you. <laughs> no, that's that's, 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 yeah, that's you. Uh, you should no put that if in you your actually, bio. If you, if you, if you your Instagram bio, you're like just put be like new account. account. No, just say yeah. backup account at underscore <laughs> <laughs> Lindley. Uh, I think that's the move. Have you posted any PRs there recently? I did. I posted, uh, I think this was a couple days ago, um, a deadlift video, 705 beltless. And my, my deadlift's been kind of coming along. I haven't really been peaking or anything like that. I kind of <clears throat> been sucking ass with the Olympic lifts here recently. Mm-hmm. So I was like, ah, fuck it. I'm just going to try to get my pull up as well as try to figure out what I'm doing wrong with my uh, snatch, my clean and jerk. And it was about two weeks ago, a week ago, I pulled 675 beltless and it moved pretty pretty well and i was like fuck it let's go for something big and uh this this friday i pulled 705 oh my god the man's in here everybody the man himself is in town tricky trick oh your deadlift was so yeah. sexual we got sidetracked Thank by chase's 705 pound deadlift to talk about tricky uh, trick i mean come on he has three six nines in his name if Chase looked at like 690 pounds. I think it's it's literally been a year since we've actually seen him in the chat. And no, we saw him the other week, man. He popped yeah. in the other week. He said hi. He was like, I lost both my legs in a marriage accident, and now he's back. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. Yeah. And we have Teho Affleck here. Chase, Chase underscore Lindley is infinitely much cooler than you are, Chase. Just thought I'd let you know that. He's well, like on his Instagram. He's like, he goes mountain biking. He goes surfing. He's got a hot girlfriend. Um, there's a photo of him at the beach having a picnic. He's the negative aspect to me. Like, I don't do anything cool except lift weights. He does everything that is cool outside of lifting weights. Yeah, no, he definitely doesn't lift weights. No, he's, uh, he looks like a, a vegan crossfitter. Yeah, he's, he's like that market space man. was already captured. So yeah, that's done. right. Yeah. Between the two of you, though, you pretty much captured the whole you white the whole guy thing. market, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, well, uh, all of his pictures are so scenic. You yeah. guys, if you're in the chat, please go he's to in the sand. He's in the sand link. dunes. Um, yeah, these we share the screen. Out. Share the screen, Alex. I'm on, that's on my second computer, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm dual boxing. I'm, I'm double fisting computers. Dual right boxing. <laughs> I've not. Tricky Trick said, boy, as I've missed you. We've missed you too, Trick, man. you got to post your lifts again, dog. Send those in, no matter how embarrassing they are. Maybe you'll bench 80 kilos again someday. <laughs> Um, Trick or excuse me, Tejo said he's managed to lose about one kg. He got way fatter over Xmas and New Year's. Yeah, if you rapidly decrease training volume and fuck your diet up, yeah, you're gonna lose a lot of muscular glycogen. Um, in the uh, bodybuilding community, uh, they refer to this as being full or flat. That's what's happening. So you probably look very flat right now. All right, here we go. Let's check this out. Oh, dude, let me see this guy's girl. Um. 
This is we uh, got We can't do this, know, boys. Dude. We can't do this. Why? Just look at the look at the. Uh, let's look at the pretty landscapes. Let's look at the top left picture. The first picture. What's the vest he's wearing? What is that? Is that a white vest? It's probably for a CrossFit running thing. Or is it's it a bulletproof Chicago. vest? Yeah, he's just, <laughs> he's just wearing his plate carrier and his knee wraps. He's like, I'm constantly ready to go immediately. Mm -hmm. Oh shit, guys! Here we go. This is big news. This is much bigger news than uh, this. He said, my wife had a PR. She pushed out 8.2 pounds. I believe Cool Dude is a dad now. Ah, Cool Dude. Congrats, awesome. man. Congratulations, Cool Dude. Yep. I pushed out something similar on Boxing Day. That was a that was a big <laughs> Christmas Day lunch, I'll tell you right now. All right, now you have to explain to the people from a normal country what Boxing Day is. We have no idea. You don't have Boxing Day. Is that where you fight people? Sure. Yeah, it's absolutely. For your presents. Oh, they just put, I put a bunch of presents in the... Um, uh, well, Boxing Day, I think, was um, it was the actual day where you would unbox your presents, right? Wasn't it? Does this have anything to do with the Boxer Rebellion in China, or is that a separate thing? Um, of course. Um, Isn't it, I thought this originated like in Canada, right? Because Canada does <laughs> like, Boxing Day. All well. good things come from Canada. <laughs> all, all these <laughs> making, making people wait 24 hours to open their presents. <laughs> Mick, we have to address this. Trick said he sent in a couple deadlift videos, but he's having issues. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. So um, there has been issues in the app. Um, did you send them through the app? Cool dude. No, that's a trick. Uh, tricky trick. Mm -hmm. um, if you send them through the app in the last couple of weeks, it probably didn't work because our mail service decided to stop working. But um, it's fixed now. But if you can email me at support at strength.club now, mm -hmm. we'll get them on the episode today. So I don't, don't think um, he says he wonders if he's too narrow footed or something. His back shouldn't be this banged up. Um, you probably have lost your conditioning base and you went back to weights that you, you were used to handling pre-surgery, frankly. You used to have a pretty narrow stance with your toe angle was like straight ahead. And I remember you used to have like yellow lifting shoes, if I remember correctly, and then you switched to like flats. So let me know what shoes you're using now. Um, yeah, email now, Tricky Trick. Mm -hmm. what did, hey, what did Tricky have um, surgery on? Uh, he had his knees replaced, I believe, both of them mm. mechanically. He tore something. I forget exactly what it was. Let us know what that is. The Lord of 69ing. Man, if we got Thought Slayer in here as well, that would be kind of the dream team, I think. That would be pretty Oh, cool. and NoFap Gamer. NoFap Gamer G. Mm. You really fanboy hard for NoFap Gamer. Yeah, is that just the name? Dude, like... He's really your guy. Yeah, that dude's awesome. Uh, he's just he just hates Chase so much. Yeah, I was about to say, I wonder if he's made any more videos of my, uh, I guess, my uh, inner gay self or some shit. <laughs> Uh, trick, the email is support didn't, at strength.club. Didn't you say you had gender dysphoria or something? Wasn't that, that was Yeah, he said yeah. some bullshit stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then Trick had meniscus surgery. He had extra meniscus implanted into his pecs because they were too small, I believe is what happens. Mm -hmm. um, but I got some questions via email from a few uh, recent show inquiries, some interesting topics to, to go over. TRT for normies. If you are, like, healthy but you could go to a TRT clinic and just start super physiological doses of test, should you? And then another interesting one was progressing without 2.5 pound plates. Um, so if we want either of those seem interesting to you, Chase? Um, like from my standpoint, I really don't do much with like the actual, the medication application of TRT. Um, but the people that we deal with day to daily um, novices, right? Just average people. If your ability to recover is, you know, hindered and you're doing everything in your power to maximize it from eating, sleeping, uh, doing everything you're properly supposed to in the weight room, man, why not do TRT? I mean, fuck, it's going to make your physiology seem a little bit younger, which is a good thing, right? You don't want to be just some 35 year old with you know, their T of like 200 walking around and just being a pussy your whole entire life. You just described me, Chase. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mick. I'm going to cry now because I've got so much estrogen. <laughs> 35. Uh, yeah, that's, a, that's a dream. That's my dream. Yeah, like, you're like, wow, 200, like, 200 T right. and 35. That's just like <laughs> good old 150 days. more. Um, yeah, we actually have a form check from the guy who sent it in. His name's Ken. Um, but, uh, Ken Q something, he was pressing 210 for a single. And like, I was like, man, if you, you know, if you've been lifting for like a solid decade natty and you haven't been making progress over the past few years, you know, like it may be time to consider losing the natty card. 
And he was like, oh, I've only been training for like two years. And then I look at the video, and the guy has like a great physique already. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> like, I remember this guy's calves. Like, uh, it's, been, it's been a long time, but I remember this is a dude with some jacked calves. Yes, I, I saw that as well. I was like, dude, you just have, it looks like you have a calf pump from walking around. Like, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do not, do not hop on gear yet, you know, like give it a decade and then figure it out. Um, yeah, I think uh, I have a, do you have anybody on TRT in the gym now? Oh, yeah. Well, the women I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna. Well. Yeah, I'm not gonna name names, but I let me just count. dox them. <laughs> <laughs> we, we probably have about three to five people. Okay. That have actually come out and actually expressed like, yeah, I started this. M- you know, either before coming to the gym or after coming <clears> to the gym, and you know, several talks from what Ripperto has done with the doctors and stuff like right. that. And hell, we have uh, an agreement with NRC uh, to help our members and the staff with uh, their TRT if they need it. The National so, Retard Center. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. No. I was like, Chase, that's very fitting of you to, <laughs> no. to have an agreement with them. No. I, I don't know what the NRC stands for, but um, mm-hmm. I think it's National Rejuven- Rejuvenation. Rejuvenation, yeah. You nearly said retard again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, it no, just no. rolls off the tongue. Uh, <laughs> it does. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got your um, so tricky trick. I got your your video. It's in the it's in the folder now. Okay. Um, Can you share your screen, Mick? Put that up. Uh, hang on a second. Um, hopefully, Trick has just completely fooled us. It's Halloween style fooled us, and he's just just completely naked. It's like the thumbnail is him lifting weights. <laughs> two seconds into it, it's just <laughs> my worst. My worst nightmare. His dick flapping it's around. Just flopping around. Um. But yeah, so have those people, so you were working with, you were coaching them pre and post shift to super physiological doses of test. They were going, you, you had them before they started TRT and now as well, right? Um, I, I would Any say of them? the majority of them. So whenever they first started out, they're at the beginning of their novice linear progression, right? Okay. So there's really no anecdotal data showing like, yeah, I've seen a difference between how they were day one, no test to... Uh, you know, day 180 with test and seeing their numbers improve. What they have said is that, you know, their mindset has changed, their drive has changed, their emotional status is way healthier type stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's interesting. I'm, I'm gonna, I gotta compare that to the experiences of my guys. I have a decent amount of guys who were on the dark side. All right, we got 250. Oh, Tricky Trick, is this your Instagram dog? Are you at Ricky Champion? quadruple ones we gotta find tricks instagram and just link it in every show i think kind of this video to play anymore is it a double is that what it is no the video is not working right okay yeah Yeah. man all right i'm just gonna unshare this all right yeah you unshare that real quick we'll go back here we're working on your video trick don't worry have you got it have you got it in the folder there alex um, yeah, I'm downloading it right now. Um, but yeah, so my experience is I have a, I have a decent amount of guys who have a, um, who I was working with them for at least a solid year and a half to two years. Um, and then they decided to go to TRT. All of them are older. I don't have, really have anyone under the age of 50 who are on it um, for just for like replacement therapy, the actual TRT version of it. Um, all of those guys are decently older. Um, I think the, the big thing I would say is the, uh, like the fatigue costs for basically everything seems to go down, you know, it's like yeah. more pep in the step. And I think I, I you know, a, a non-zero part of it, almost 100% is them being happier, them sleeping better, them having more sex, them just kind of being like at a lower level of stress in their life. It's not yeah, their ability to recover is just through the roof now. Yeah, they're just like they're just generally happier. And I've noticed when people are happy, you know, <laughs> like that is a huge change in what their oh, stress level yeah, is. Exactly. Um, yeah, so it's like Theodore actually. Um, Theodore is in finals week right now. His performance has plummeted. He's just like I can barely make it to the gym. If I'm at the gym, I'm stressed the entire time. If you're at like finals week in college, very bad time to a uh, very bad time to be training heavy. Um, but people who shift to TR it seems like there's just kind of this big uh, elation period where you can do a lot with programming um, just because they're doing so well. Mick, are you on TRT yet? Nah, I don't even bother trying to get it here. It's just ridiculous. Is it outlawed? Pretty much. 
<laughs> it's I mean, it is possible to get it, but they just keep they just keep reducing the reference range to just crazy. I think it's, I think the reference range is under 150 now. That's so, crazy, man. Wow. Yeah, it's just you know, it's um. That is that is such a hilariously low reference range for your population. Mm -hmm. All right, so hold on, boys. We're gonna stop sharing the screen real quick. I guess I, I I'll just wrap up like the TRT thing. Um, I I kind of had this conversation with some people too like if your ability to recover again like the things that I was saying earlier like you're maximizing <clears throat> your ability to sleep your eating's good too and you just can't seem to recover go out there and have a test like it, it does not hurt just to have your blood tested and see what it does the free test is no it doesn't it's I mean it depends on your arm get, <laughs> it depends who takes your uh, blood I guess uh, unless they're jabbing tested. you with a fucking turkey baster right but, you know, just go check it, right? Have all the data to show that, look, uh, I have control over this. I know this is working. Um, I may need to do something that I haven't thought of. And now I have somewhat of the data to kind of show that, you know, I'm, I may be on a hunch here. How do you feel about this lift, Chase? Are you watching this deadlift? I am now. Um, it's a little floaty. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say I'd like to see more slack out of the bar to start. Um, slow this down, tricky, and then think about maintaining the arch in your back or the extension during the whole entire lift. Yeah, when you're getting a basically like high shin past the knees, when you're in that middle portion of the ROM, um, you're just kind of loosening up your back, and then once it gets to that point where it's not going to get any looser, then it starts moving again at a little bit of a higher speed, and everything just kind of re uh, reconfigures itself. Yeah, tricky. Yeah. It, where, where on your just back get tighter, is it hurt? I would say. Just is your low is it your low back that's probably fucked up? Because I I'm betting it is. Cool dude, he's on TRT and it changed my life significantly for the better. Wow. That's good to hear, man. Yeah. He's uh managed to pop a baby out, so it's obviously yeah, he working. He didn't have a wife Hell before. Yeah. Now he has a wife <laughs> and a baby. He still doesn't have a wife. <laughs> he's just inseminating left, right, and center since he's seen on TRT. <laughs> yeah, Trick said lower back. Um, oh, yeah, spine. so Chase, what's your theory about uh, Trick's spine? Is it going to stay in there? Is it going to fall out? What's going to happen? Oh, he has spondy, man. His vertebrae are just now smashed, and they're just gravel. They're just going to shoot out. Yeah. No, it's just you, you need to slow down the lift, feel all the, the tension, the load in your arms, and hold on to the extension in the back for as long as possible. I mean, you, you got to think about almost overextending your back to push. Yeah, so, Trick, if you're trying to emulate kind of like a John Hack style deadlift, or just, it's very popular, it's in vogue right now, of just being like, I'm going to brace at the top, I'm going to bend over and pull it immediately. Like, you're, you'll still be in a good position. You're still basically over midfoot here. Your balance really isn't wonky. Um, but if you've practiced your entire deadlifting career, I remember some of your earlier deadlifting, being patient, getting tight at the bottom, squeezing your chest up, and then initiating the rep. If you just decide to stop doing that, you'll still have the strength to move these big weights, but it's like the pattern may be more sensitive. You may not have the conditioning to do that, you know? Um, like, a, it's a, those tiny changes. So it's like conventional sumo, sumo to conventional. Even just pulling, like, with a really straight back versus a kind of rounded back, belt to beltless. Like, those changes take a while to sink in. Um, and if you're coming off a surgery where you basically just globally detrained, you know, like your back is detrained, your hips, your legs, maybe you sort of upper body work, you need to be more generous to your, with yourself on the comeback. So if this is like a 20K PB on a stiff bar, it's like maybe maybe hang out a little bit more, you know, like um, yeah. even if your muscles can do it, the rest of it may not be able to yet. Um, question from the boy, from the man, Theodore. He said, Chase, any reason for the beltless deadlift PRs recently? 705 raw is newts. What do you think, Chase? Thank you, Theodore. Um, I've been pulling a lot recently with uh, no belt for the Olympic stuff, and I've always found that I kind of re get reliant sometimes on either my knee wraps or uh, my belt sometimes whenever I deadlift. So I, I figured, you know, why not just kind of have that ease of mind with knowing that, look, I've, I can pull this heavy-ass weight without a belt. I can trust in my ability to set my back. I don't need to rely on too much of my equipment. And same thing kind of with my knee wraps, like I'll, I'll try to warm up as high as I can without my knees kind of fucking with me and hurting. 
um, just to, so, to know that, you know, I, I don't need this, you know, or if I happen to not have my knee wraps one day, I'm not going to just not squat or some shit like that. Yeah, Chase brings up a very good point. You know, you can use knee wraps, you can use your belt, you can use all of these tools, even live variations in the lifts to modulate the stress. So this is very important for you, Trick. So it's like, hey, if you're trying to find a reason or find a, a vehicle to make deadlifts still challenging over this period where you need to kind of like build your fitness back up to be able to build your fitness and strength and conditioning to do all these things you used to do, maybe do a, a beltless deadlift block. You're going to take, you know, let's say 40, 50 kilos off the bar, but you're going to give yourself that time to reacclimate to the loads because you're just not acclimated to the loads anymore. Um, so like the, you know, I don't think that form was super deleterious. Um, but, you know, if you're saying it's like, hey, anything I need to change, I would probably say it's going to be a programming change, you know, because it's like we know you know how to deadlift. We've seen you deadlift and squat. We know you know how to do it, you know. Yeah, I agree. Um, and also just if you're if you're lacking the ability to hold your back in extension too, not having a belt there, it causes super hyper focus in that area to where now it kind of cleans it up over that deadlifting block or just, you know, how many times you're going to be deadlifting without a belt. And that's what I found with my training is that now I'm able to set my back way harder than what I've normally been and not rely on like my upper back kind of flexing and stuff. Yeah. Like, so anytime, you know, for programming like the my favorite deadlift variations are the, the pause pull and the RDL. I have my guys do those without a belt one almost almost 100 percent of the time um virtually all of them so it's like if you just go to a rack pull where it's like heavier for example oh love face is back everybody <laughs> huh? they were here before <laughs> uh love face xyz um but uh everybody give love face a shout out real quick um let's block them again who is this guy? Is online oh, it's just a spammer. Oh. Yeah, it's just like a cam girl website. Man, I um, wish it was someone cool. Tricky, I just want you to share your programming spreadsheet with me. I'll just I'll just shit talk from a distance. Okay, just I just want to see what's happening. That's all. That's all. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I'll have a lot of my guys. You know, once they're getting out of this novice phase, we'll let them, of course, use the belt the entire time as much as they want to. Um, I'm not really concerned about a lot of skill work like that. And then once they start getting stronger into kind of this intermediate phase, I'm going to give them a variation to work on that doesn't need uh, a belt. It doesn't need like the highest loads in the world. You know, that way they can say, hey, I haven't done really good back extension work in a while because I, you know, back when I was hyper focusing on it, I was pulling 225. Now I'm pulling 455. I need more time to remember how to do this. So like Chase was saying, Chase is a very experienced lifter, but even working on those Olympic lifts where it's like back extension is prime, he still needs help with that. Um, yeah. Here we go, what Trick say? He said, I'm gonna try to get tight in the bottom and slowly bring it up rather than breath with straight legs and ripping it. <laughs> yeah. Thoughts sounds on that, like Chase? a plan. Yeah, yeah it sounds like a plan. Yeah. You know, I mean, I hate to sound dogmatic here, but like, the reason why we have this five-step setup is because we've tried this um, and we it's kind of held its own versus other ways of deadlifting and kind of setups and stuff. And, you know, if you're pulling 900 fucking pounds, do whatever you want to. Like, it, it, you're strong enough to handle whatever you need to. Mm -hmm. But at the start, you need to get into the proper position, making sure that you know everything that your body needs to be doing as you're preparing to lift the load. Yeah, you got to think about... I don't want to call it like preparatory work in such a way where you'd be like, oh, I can't take a deadlift PR unless I made sure to hit three RDL sessions in between my last deadlifting event. Not so much like that, um, but you want to think about it. It's like, you know, if you don't have the requisite skill, if you feel like you don't have the requisite uh, kind of relationship between like how your strength is expressing itself, how its fatigue is, you got to you got to pay attention to that. Mick, what are you drinking, Doug? Have you, do you guys have these things in, in the States? Like stubby holders? A koozie? Cozy? What did you call cozy. me? Dude, that's like, that's a no, C it's word. It's not a koozie. <laughs> a koozie. Koozie. Um, what do you uh, Pepsi, in the koozie? Pepsi Max. Does that have caffeine in it? I think so. Nice. Okay. Yeah, all sorts of chemicals, but no sugar, so it's healthy. There you go. Yeah. It's healthy. Tips from, tips from the fun. Jew. <laughs> that's what we. That's our new new podcast. <laughs> How to live a Jew life. Oh, yeah, God. frugality in the new normal. Um, hey, we got loveface.xyz back in the chat again. 
I know. I had to ban him. He spammed it three times. Online strips without clothes. I'm tempted. Just in case you didn't know what strips were. <laughs> uh, yeah, hopefully. I mean, if he came in here and he was, like, selling some sort of cryptocurrency, that would be great. But Oh, yeah. NFTs. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, good question, Tricky. Good question. Chase, you want to take this one? Tricky trick. Do you think Sumo <clears throat> Deathling ties in with the low bar squad due to the kind of similar stance with a somewhat close Sumo stance? Um, no. So it's it's not <laughs> at all. Next, so, next question. Next <laughs> question. <laughs> no, so Tricky, you got to think of it like this, right? So what are the forces acting on the body as the force is being applied? So in the deadlift, any pulling, rather, like you have a bunch of tension, your back, yes, is experiencing moment, um, but it's kind of affected by the angle due to how your stance is, right? So the amount of moment that you're experiencing, it may be um, less on a sumo deadlift because your back angle isn't as high, or rather uh, horizontal, it may be more vertical. Whereas like uh, a conventional deadlift, a low bar squat, your back is more horizontal your back is brunting all of the uh, the moment and all of the the force <clears throat> during the lift. The okay. majority of the force. These are all excellent questions, frankly. I just want to do a quick shout out to our boy, Novak Gamer G. Mick, do you see him? He's in the chat. Uh, of yeah. a stream. How's it going? Dude? I also I'm also quite enjoying Nazi Holocaust genocide Hitler Nazi as well. That's uh, actually I guess I guess, I guess I guess. <laughs> I guess Rip's in the chat as well, so... Uh. <laughs> oh, man. This is just a slam dunk of a stream. I'll go to the sumo question. So I do think that sumo deadlifting and lower squatting are similar in that you can grade the stance. So if I have an athlete who's, like, dead set on sumo deadlifting or if I need another deadlift variation, you know, I just kind of want to use sumo for fun, they want to use it for fun, I will have them start with a stance a little bit wider than their squat stance. Because otherwise, like Chase, so Chase just pulled 705 beltless. He's a strong guy. If he was like, you know what, I'm just going to load up 600 and do a fucking sumo deadlift, his adductors would be so long at that point, they would just pop off, basically. Um, it's not a guarantee, but basically it's just like, it's like he can use such massive loads at these new joint angles. You Chase can take a massive load, that's for sure. <laughs> these massive weights, excuse me. Um, it's you wouldn't even see it. Uh, I'm going to say that. <laughs> Damn it, Nick. Damn it. Sorry. That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here I know. for. All I know. I have just nothing else to contribute. About. I just want to spurg out about lifting. That's all I want. Um, but yeah, so it's like, you know, you don't want to have someone go from dramatically different joint angles while who, well, they're also strong. Like if it's someone who's deadlifting 115 pounds, it's not heavy enough for them to hurt themselves or to cause some sort of massive influx of stress. Um, it's like if Chase decided to start randomly doing sumo at 600, I don't think it would go well. He would be like so fatigued from that. He would be out for like two weeks. Um, so if I do have someone ever go through that scenario, I'll grade them in with that squat stance. He's right that it's similar there. I think the training response, the fatigue cost, all that's very individual. Um, but like, I don't know. I think, I think the way that you're moving the bar, the way that you're driving the bar, it's quite different. Um, I don't think there's many mechanical advantages to a very close sumo deadlift. When I do sumo deadlifts, it's also a very close to my squat stance. So it's like, I, I'm not, I'm not shitting on the movement. Um, mm. No fab gamer G. He says, "Why not just do a trap bar deadlift?" Question mark. Boys, what Troll, do you think? it's gonna be trolling. I, I mean, say, uh, go it's look. It's a good question. It's <laughs> 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 a good question. I'd rather talk about Nazi genocide. Holocaust genocide, Hitler, Nazi something. Um, <laughs> if we had to ask this guy out of the three of us, <clears throat> which one would he want to be mates with? Just oh, you know, or if you had to rank us, if you had to rank us. <laughs> Out of order of, you know, <laughs> who to kill first. Oh, okay. I mean, it's definitely me and Alex are like, you know, out of me and Alex, who's who's going, who's dropping first? I They would make me like the manager of a labor camp. I'm just, I'm just I think like so, a good yeah. worker and I love yeah. moving around so much. Yeah. And <laughs> Chase would be guarding you. <laughs> exactly. That's right. Exactly. That's, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, and I'd already be in the ovens. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, you would. So I don't <laughs> think Chase... Has, Chase, when's the last time you've seen a random beginner try a trap bar deadlift? Um, personally, I don't think I ever have, except for maybe during high school. Like um, in the high school weight room where we were doing stations for off season, and you know we just have kids who don't really fucking lift just hop in between this hex bar and try to pull stuff. 
Okay. Yeah, so it is very messy because it requires more precision than people think it does. So it's like with the conventional deadlift, what's step one? Approach the bar, get your shins one inch away. Try and do that with a fucking trap bar. You know what I mean? Like there, there's not really a good replicant for getting it right over the middle of your foot. You know, so you're kind of relying on that person's ability to gauge that. Second, like hand position, it's really variable. You know, so it's like some people grab a little bit too far backwards, some of them too far forward. Some people will hold it in their pinkies. Some people in their kind of ring and index finger or their index and pointer finger. Um, it's so the also the um, it, it's tilted. It's also the width of the where the handles are as well. I mean, I found yeah. any time I've touched a, a trap bar, it, your hands end up being quite uh, like outside of your hips. Uh, which yep. is once once the weights get heavy, it just puts a lot of strain on your shoulders. Um, yeah, so it's like if someone, for example, has like very short arms and they're doing the trap bar deadlift, it's like their range of motion is going to be different. You know, their their capacity to change their joint angles will be different. It's like there's there's two functional modalities you can pull a trap bar with. You can go like really low hips and just kind of squat the thing up. Um, the bar will almost always be forward of midfoot whenever you're trying that method for most people's anthropometry. Um, or you could do the traditional deadlifting method of just basically replicating our five step setup, but pretending it's on the trap bar um in both situations you have a lot of swing unless it's like quite heavy the person's really good at it so it's like for us teaching someone consistency a replicatable setup you know that matches our criteria for teaching a beginner overall it's like the trap bar may be easier because you're you can't teach someone how to set their back into extension but for those of us who can um the trap bar has more negatives than it does positives i mean which one can you put more weight on which one can you lift more a oh, trap bar for sure yeah definitely yeah, I mean, like, so it's the only thing I like for the trap bar um, is because uh, a lot of people will just do high handles and they'll be like, why would I ever use the low handles? That's stupid. I always find that hilarious. That's just that makes me happy to see that um, people are like, oh, yeah, I deadlift like 500. It's like a rack pull. You know, it's like a very high rack pull with the with the trap bar. They are fun for carries, though. You can use them like a frame carry. I don't know if you guys have ever fucked around with that, but it's fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, every every week, at least once a week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you like stand inside of it and you can just be like, oh, these are the heaviest grocery bags in the world. You know what I mean? If you can lift more weight, then it's better, right? Not yeah, according so, to our criteria. So yeah, so let's address this. So no fat gamer, we have three criteria, right? Or really four. So we have one of the criteria is moving the most waste possible, the most weight possible, rather. Uh, using the <clears> most <throat> muscle mass possible, right? Over the greatest effective range of motion, thus getting you stronger. So yes, it's solving one of those criteria, but is it really using all the muscle mass that we can? Mm, kind of, but uh, it, what about the uh, greatest effective range of motion? So like Alex is saying, like if you're using the high handles here, it's diminishing that range of motion and due to where the bar placement is, the handles on the outside, widening out the grip, again, limiting the range of motion. Uh, it's just not a, as effective as a lift as the conventional deadlift is. If we went to Steel Man, no Fat Gamer G's argument, right? So if we're not poo pooing it, these are very valid questions. So it's like if you're using a low handle and you're technically proficient at it, what's the harm? Um, I would say it's that <clears throat> it is a slightly less replicable setup. So our fourth criteria is it provides a good, or let's say, good, valid you know, reasonable training response. So it's like a Turkish getup. You can't really micro load it. You can't really get stronger with it. It doesn't have a very, you know, it doesn't have a very reasonable training response for anyone who can program it. You know, um, the, the conventional deadlift seems to be more consistent in that way because you can be more consistent with it, right? Cause you have that forward constraint of where the barbell is interacting with your shins. Um, so it's like someone who's just coming into the gym, I don't think they're going to, or in most cases, they're going to get a reasonable training response out of a trap bar deadlift because they're going to have a lot of technical issues with it. Whereas a conventional deadlift, we can get a good conventional deadlift. How long does it take to get a good conventional deadlift going, Chase? 10 minutes, 15? If you're really, yeah, it's a session. A session. One session. Yeah, you can get that done within a session, even if people are not confident about it. Um, I would say that that kind of makes it makes it a little better you know um, and then rip provides a very valid reason as well like if you know if you pull that forward of midfoot it now can swing behind midfoot with weight because it doesn't have mm -hmm. that constraint against your legs mm -hmm. you know? um yeah and then i think you even asked so if you're lifting more weight then you're probably using more muscle mass right uh no no that's not necessarily so if we're thinking let's say in terms of like a leg press versus a squat yeah you can use a lot more weight but um, you are not using as much muscle mass compared to the squat is. Uh, like your back really isn't doing anything. The amount of hips that you're using is basically non-existent uh, to where you're, you're just, you know, 
extending your knee. Um, you can get those real heavy, but it's not the same. Not the same. G Lock, he said, should I go to the gym now or wait till the end of the stream? What do we think, guys? I think listen to it while you're at the gym. That's the easy, easy choice. Listen to it while you're at the gym. Easy peasy. Tricky mm. Trick, yeah, Trick said that as well. Actually, Trick, I think that NoFap Gamer G is correct in this one by this criteria. The barbell shrug being the best way of all time to get thick and juicy. This is correct. <laughs> <laughs> I think I want like a two inch rack pull with velocity and I'm just shrugging it up to the top. That's the, I think that's the way, man. Have we, uh, we got more form checks to go through? Because we're, I mean, uh, we have a bunch, man. We're 40 um, minutes in and we've done one. So, all right, you guys talk while I pull these up. Talk. Um, how many calories that, right? do you eat a day, Chase? And what does it consist of? I don't really track all my calories. Um, but here recently, like, I've actually been gaining weight. I'm, I think, I, at the heaviest, I weighed at 263. I'm getting kind of thick, so yeah, yeah I know. Um, so I, I is that of, intentional or did that just happen? No, I I go into like weird little periods of like I'll gain weight and then I'll kind of stabilize for a little bit and let my body recomp. I don't do it like intentionally. I just kind of just do it, and then I just slowly start to ramp it up again to where like <clears> uh, not too long ago, like I was stuck for the longest time at like 250, and then uh, I guess training. That must have been difficult for you. What? <laughs> The thing stuck at two feet. I mean, it's just, you know, we've all been there before. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, training changes, and then um, my demand for recovery has changed as well. Eating a little bit more, now um, my body's just kind of recompositing and, and getting accustomed to that. So what do you normally eat in a day? Like, you just, you know, roughly, like, uh, what, so what breakfast, gives a rundown? Uh, breakfast, it's about, like, five eggs, uh, some sort of carbs with it. So, like, um, I'd say, like, Half a cup of grits. Um, What's grits? So that it's good. No, no, it's it's good, man. It's a part of corn that it's kind of like a mash, and uh, it, it's pretty flavorful. So you can add like a, your different condiments and stuff into it. And uh, mustard. <laughs> no, 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 not like that. So what we use ranch. Is, uh, this chicken, is corn and ranch. Oh yeah, fuck tart. We, <laughs> we use uh, <laughs> we, that's what it is. It's all olive oil. Uh, I use chicken bou uh, bouillon in there, so it's like chicken mm. seasoning. In you there. do like it's a savory good. grid. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's fucking good. Okay. Um, about five pieces of bacon and then whatever meat that I have left over from the night before. So like either steak, ground beef, whatever, and just kind of mix it all up. And you um, just top all of this with like a spray butter, presumably, right? No, no. <laughs> just to get some more fat in there. Um and then I'll, I'll eat like um, some carbs and stuff before training, like a, either some Gatorade, uh, protein bar, or something like that. And then um, have a little bit of a snack whenever I get home or after training. Before my classes in the evening, I just either whatever Phoebe has cooked that day, it depends. And then at night um, for dinner, it's either steaks, um, ground beef again, so a lot of meat. Man, this head position on this last rep of this press is amazing. This light's going down at some point, isn't it? If he uses some 45s, I bet so. Mm -hmm. This looks like the old standard barbell set as well. This isn't a new barbell. <clears throat> I think you could stand, uh, a Ben. I think you could stand have a little bit more drama in the hip motion. It doesn't need to be that conservative. Like, really throw them forward, you know? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of this is due to just like the room itself. So, where's your gaze? It's basically all over the fucking place. You're looking. Oh, that's at, a fridge. That's a. I just realized yeah, he's, he's just he's, in the kitchen. Okay. He's either looking at the fridge or like the the room yeah. that's going outside of the fridge there. So like yeah. the depth perception is totally off. It's fucking with you. Like uh, I think you need to kind of move around to like where the bookcase is. If is that a bookcase or wherever those shelves are? Something. Stare at that. It's a lot close. The focal point is. It's going to get your eyes in a better position, kind of let you feel the hips a little bit easier. Yeah, just look at this kind of this head movement in the end. I've noticed this a lot with people who have like an inconsistent position of where they want to keep their head. Like if you don't know where your gaze is, you don't have an active target to lock your gaze into, people will kind of move their head around. Um, I'm curious as to how he got the bar back down to the ground without, because there's no way he's dropping to the ground there. He just curls it, dog. Probably, yeah, just power like pins it a tenth to. All right, anything um, else in the chat while I pull up this next one? 
Uh, tricky, tricky. If you've got more videos, we're probably not going to get to them today. So just email me and we'll probably do them next week, I reckon. Oh, fuck. So he has deadlift 200 for 10, bench 140 for 1, bench 130 for 3, squat 150 for 5. Anything tickle your fancy? You just I'm send literally tickled. all of those in. Yeah, next send all, send them all. The, next week can be the tricky trick episode, man. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put all of the six nines in the title. Don't worry. Uh, this is Brayden here, squatting in the basement. There's cotton candy on the ceiling. Chase, I'm curious what you think about his upper back position. What's going on? I think the bar is too high. Mm -hmm. I want to see it a little bit lower. Um, and then you can kind of tell, too, as he's coming up, he's leading with his elbows. So the bars really isn't that stable. Head's kind of cranking up, too. So there's a lot going on there, but I kind of want to adjust more the hip drive, right? So he's not really driving his hips. He's, again, just coming up with the bar itself. Mm -hmm. There it was, it was high on the first one, but you have to find the better bar position on your back. So way lower, about like two inches lower. Two? Get the bar. I say so. Jesus. Anyways, as low as you can, <laughs> as low as you can feasibly hold it and not fuck up your arms or anything like that right so it's, it's a nice little comfortable shelf on the posterior delts um at that point there you're gonna lean over way fucking more than you, you want to you're gonna put the belt in between your legs right and you're gonna stare right where like the wall and the floor meet mm -hmm. yeah i love that cue put your belt between your legs that's a really good one to, to get someone to lean over um the gaze is good i don't think the bar's that high i think one inch down is fine. I think the grip's just way too narrow, man. You know, it's like the bar is, he's, you're holding the bar, if you can see where my hand is on the camera, you're holding it down here. Get the bar in your fingers, right? You want to have some portion of some of your fingers interacting with the bar. If it's like more towards your wrist, um, that's no bueno. Uh, so, you know, if you let your hands go out to the side more, you'll be able to move the bar down slightly. I'm sure if you keep the grip this tight, like here, you won't be able to move the bar down. Um, but move the bar down a little bit. Either seven inches, like Chase was saying, or one and a half inches. Just strap it to your belt. <laughs> That's what we <laughs> say, man. Think, of, imagine if the bar was on your belt, on yeah. your on your tailbone, Just to squat it. it up. Chase, have you tried a belt squat? How do you like this? I have not. Do you think you would like it? Probably not. Okay. <laughs> I only know barbells. <laughs> uh, we got another squat coming in here from Lucas Gallo. Um, if anyone remembers him, he was the one who was lifting in very much so the dark. Oh, yeah. And now it looks like, looks like he's still lifting at night and it's kind of like put a little bit of a contrast filter on. It looks it's like someone just put like a flashlight up, like a yeah. mag light on like a shelf. And just this is kind of like you're holding the your, the holding the flashlight up. Your dad's working on the car kind of <laughs> yeah. vibes is what's going on here. His kid's just holding up a light. Like, son, I got to do a set. He's like, hold on. <clears throat> oh, it's just a slow one, boys. Oh, God. Is that a single? Nope. Triple? Or maybe all five? This is quite the fight, Lucas. Mm hmm. What do we think? First one was probably the worst, but um, you have to find a way, and it kind of <laughs> rears its head too later in the set. Hips and knees have to break at the same time. You're fighting that real hard. Um, lean over, I'd say, a little bit quicker than you want to and just get your ass back as far as you can. Uh, and you should be fine after that. And then as you come up, stay with the hips. Keep your ass back as you stand up. Agreed. The, the other stuff I would add, it seems like you're fighting for your upper back to not round the entire time. It seems like you are tr attempting to collapse in. Um, you know, you'll see that on the first rep where it's like the head shoots down, the elbows shoot up a little bit, basically as soon as you start moving. Um, if you look up identifying and correcting thoracic extension in the squat, starting strength, really good article on that. Um, a few of the other squat grip videos, you're keeping like a physically good grip, but I think the elbows are too high. I pull the elbows down. Um, like you see this logo on my shirt, this is Fuji. I, whenever I'm squatting, I'm trying to aim this at the wall in front of me. I'm not trying to let this point down towards my feet because if I let it point down towards my feet, that means my upper back is collapsed, right? So I'm trying to get that logo on my shirt to squeeze up in front of me. Um, keep doing that. All the stuff that, uh, Chase said, and then you should be, you should be golden. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, this first rep, it almost looks like you're just going to, like, snap, just <laughs> fall forward, basically. Yeah, you're um, way forward. 
Yeah, upper back is probably the big thing you got to work through. Ooh, L7D. I think that's Mid. him, right? Is that? Hi, guys, just log in. Hey, Lucas. How's it going, dog? How's that press going, man? We saw the press before, and that was quite the grind. I think that was 135 or 145. Do you remember that? Uh, I don't remember it. Okay. Actually, yeah. who's a, a grindy press? I don't know. Yeah, send in another press video, Lucas. I'm excited to see how that goes. But very good timing, man. Just logs in to check his own form checks. I mean, that's a bit <laughs> and then selfish. And then out. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah, really fucks good. off. He's like, yeah, thanks. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, you can, a uh, uh, tricky trick, you can upload the videos through the app now, it's all working again. Is there a file size limit on the app uploads? I think it might be 100. Oh, no, actually, I think we, I don't think there is actually, but don't go and send me a 3 gigabyte file, please. <laughs> yeah, someone just that. upload a bunch of, uh, insight yeah. collections in image form. <laughs> just a lot of hentai for Alex. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As if I don't have enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, your hard drive is full, as you were telling me before the stream. <laughs> All right, so we got Joaquim here, Joaquim Rice, our man from somewhere. We don't. I believe know. it's pronounced ripe. Ripe? Do you think so? Mm, I, I don't so. believe you, frankly. Oh, there is a B. <laughs> I thought this was right. an S. Apparently, I can't read. That'll be on the next iteration of the starting strength board exam. Is going to be basic literacy. Jeez, this guy's—he's pretty snippy, old L seven D. Comes in, gets his form checked, and says, "Don't call me Dawg." D A W G. Damn, dude. Ah. Anything else you'd like from us? Whatever nickname you have, I don't know. I can't say L seven D that quickly. I need like a single, uh, single syllable. Just let us know, man. I guess man, homie, homie's two syllables. I've got, I've got another one for him. <laughs> <laughs> How do we feel about Joaquim's uh, uh, squad here, guys? Man, it started off pretty good, and then uh, just got higher as the set went on. Mm-hmm. As I his think, shorts got lower. Yeah. I think, um, Joaquin, too, like, as you're getting ready to go, don't move your feet out. I think you're fine here. Like, your stance was fine the first time. Um, then you kind of do, I guess, a weird fidget before going down. Just shove out the knees. Focus on bending down a little bit lower, and you, this should be just fine. I would turn around if possible. I think your face is just getting too close to the wall or floor, and you're thinking you should come up earlier. Like, you still need to keep descending. Like, the, the goal isn't for you to lower your chest as low as possible. It's for you to lower your hips slower, right? Mm -hmm. um, so when you're squatting, think, I'm just sending my butt down to the ground. I'm not trying to lean over. I'm not trying to maximize my ability to lean over. Because um, like we were saying, it's like they're getting high, but they're getting high because you're leaning over so much, but you're not willing to send the hips down and pair. Um, like you need to be willing to let your hips move down. Um, I would also pull your shorts up. You got to like hitch your pants after a certain point of squatting. It kind of looks like a squat diaper when you're standing up at the top, but like just pull them up basically. Luke, Luke can, can work. work, coach. One of my, I, I think He's just one making of my noise now. That's a good name. That, that was a little bit of a comeback. One of my favorite clients is named Luke, actually. Um, I think that's it for form checks that we had this week, guys. Is it? I think so. Didn't we have, I thought we had one for MJDC as well. And uh, We did that one before. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, or unless he sent in another bench video with like a suspiciously similar weight. No. Could be that. Um, well, we've got seven minutes to go. It's the top share fellas. contact information, man. Hmm. Just putting this shit back up here. Is anyone in the chat going to the um, fight, kill, maim, uh, lift, lift uh, fight. seminar in um, Wichita Falls? I, when is that I, again? Late February, I think, maybe? Yeah. Let's figure mm -hmm. it out. And then they're going to march to the Capitol straight after as well. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Chase, is, Chase is serious. He's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> you got your, your, your Viking, your Viking helmet. I, I was love totally Joe wrong. Biden. I love the government. I hate ivermectin. <laughs> I love uh, America. So it is April 30th and May 1st. Is what it is. Mm -hmm. There you go. But yeah, three uh, of my favorite activities. All centered into one thing. I mean, that should be pretty interesting. It should be a very, very knowledgeable little uh, weekend there. It'd be mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. The masters yep. from all three of the disciplines. 
Um, yeah, I, I'm not super familiar with John Valentine, but I watched the video that Nick posted on it. He seems like a great guy. I read a little his bio. Um, if you can go to that, go to that. That'll be super cool. Um, and then I'm going to the, uh, the seminar in February. Chase, are you are you working at that one? I'll see you there, man. Oh, you're... Oh, fuck yeah. Hell yeah. Hell Chase yeah, will dude. finally see me that I'm only 4'8 in real life. <laughs> I've seen you before. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm actually legally a midget. I just walk around on stilts the whole time. That's what it is. My lifts are terrible. Um, so where, where are you going to take where are you gonna take him, Chase? In which stuff falls? I want yeah, to wind and dine him something fancy, man. Yeah, you can take him to the... Oh, is it the Iron Horse? Over the railroad I mean, I, tracks? Is that the... No, we're not gonna... <laughs> <laughs> um, You're just going to drop me off there? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you to somewhere nice, man. We're going to go to the Pelican, Mick, and have some... What's the Pelican? Did you not uh, eat there ever? I don't think so. It's like hmm. Rusty like... never took me there. Nah, it sounds it's... like a seafood restaurant in the middle of the We just went to the it's... Texas Grill House or whatever it's called. Texas uh, Roadhouse? Yeah, that's the one, yeah. Texas Roadhouse isn't bad. It's just... We went to McDonald's. <laughs> No, uh, so the Pelicans is, it's, I mean, I really didn't think it was all that fancy, but um, a lot of fancy people go there, like big name people in Wichita Falls. Ooh, Anyways, big name it's, people in Wichita Falls. Yeah, yeah. He's the biggest no, name in Wichita Falls. Black go there. It's a steak and seafood place, and uh, you, you go there, then it's just like, oh, yeah. We're going to Oh, is that, is that like a, is that one of those um, craft beer places? Is that the one? No, 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 no. It, it doesn't, What's no, that that's, place? That's the brewery downtown. Should I bring a tuxedo with me? Yes. And just wear it to the seminar for all three. <laughs> uh, just never sit down standing. You look like a Rwandan child soldier. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the goal, man. That's the goal. I'm trying to check my AK on the flight. And they're just mm. not having it. How do you um, do that anyway? How do you take your guns with you on flights? Um, you have to have them in a case uh, that is locked, and then it also has to have a TSA lock on it, so the TSA can access the lock. Um, and it can't, it can't be that, in a checked bag, of course. It has to how be. How does that make sense? If, so, if you have it locked, and then the TSA has it locked, so what if they? The, the TSA needs to be able to access it, and if you have your personal lock on it, you need to be able to give them a key as well. Oh, okay. You mm -hmm. That's bullshit. But sure. yeah, it's a very interesting system. It very much <laughs> so is. Tricky trick. This is a good question for our, our remaining two and a half viewers. Uh, right, I just hit you with a big video dump through the app. I thank you for your dump trick. We appreciate it. Are we on this time every week? We should be. Sundays yeah, are cleared so. up, I think, for the gang. Yeah. Um, I guess yeah, not just... the seminar weekend. That's about it. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. I forget about that. But... Yeah, that must be me. That must be me doing form checks. Which yeah, would be me doing form checks by himself. Yeah, yeah. Mick will be fine. Mm -hmm. That'll be fine. Um, yeah, just subscribe. Mash that like button. <laughs> <laughs> it. I always wanted to say that because I see other people say it. We never there do it. Go, like, it's like hit that subscribe mm -hmm. button. Oh, I've been, fucking, fucking I've been watching a guy my... on YouTube called uh, Bald and Bankrupt. It's the greatest channel ever. Bald and he bald. just go, yeah. He goes to um, all these old uh, Eastern Bloc countries and just walks around with like a selfie stick with a GoPro on it, and he just he speaks perfect Russian. He's an English guy, and uh, he he just goes around to all these strange places and talks to the people and uh yeah it's uh that's amazing what, what are they he goes about? to chernobyl he goes to chernobyl what do you say what, what does he talk about is it just like hey he just talks he just goes hey we're walking it. through this town now and this is what this sign means <laughs> and um he'll go and talk to people and say was was things better in the ussr or now and most of the time they say ussr because <laughs> 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 the places are so shit <laughs> oh my god tricky trick you are my best friends in the whole wide world we appreciate Aww. it man thank you for we're glad you came back from your leave of absence to defend mm. your country i think he was tricky, tricky tricks in per are you, i think tricky tricks in perth he might be in perth but is that a real um, place? it is a real place but it's the one place in australia that's still locked down basically oh, okay. that's what that's that's west coast right yeah it's west coast yeah. Very knowledgeable, Chase. Slam they're still aiming over. for zero. They're still aiming for zero COVID over there. Good luck with that, fellas. Good luck. Both y'all should both y'all should take a walkabout together and just meet like halfway in Australia. Mm -hmm. just... Jews don't. Jews haven't walked through the deserts for about five thousand years, Chase. Hey, you... They did it once and they're done. <laughs> we did it once and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Old Testament style. Yeah. I don't even go to the beach, let alone go to the desert. Um, oh, I love the beach, man. I love the beach. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Trick said he is in Perth. Uh, we're in zombie lockdown because our leaders are dweebs. You should run for local office and then just flex in all your pictures, man. 
You would get yeah. a surprising amount of votes if you're just fucking just flexing on people. A sleeveless tuxedo too. Fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Deadlifting six fifty. Just that's his his <laughs> his, uh, his posters on all the walls. Uh, man. Yeah. Well, no trick. Seriously, you got to upload your programming spreadsheets. I need to see what your shit is doing. Um, but Chase, where can we find you at? In your parting words. Uh, Instagram Chase Lindley. And then okay. if you're ever in OKC, come by the gym and I'll be there. Okay. Yeah. Um, I do and programming. Challenge him, challenge him to a, uh, a Mexican standoff. Uh, challenge him to arm wrestling. Um, yeah. <laughs> there should be an arm wrestling table at every SS franchise. I don't know why there isn't already. Um, but uh, you can find me at website, Echo Strength. Uh, I do programming, coaching, do a lot of training camps too. So just let me know. And if you want videos on the show, Mick, where can they go? Uh, you can now submit them through the app again because that's working. And uh, or email me at support at strength club. All right, boys. Yeah. That's it. We'll see you next Sunday. Thank you very much. Good night.